Okay guys, I'm going to apologize in advance. It seems like I picked the bad day to do a video because my husband has a lawnmower and it seems like everywhere I go he's there. And then I'm recording on my phone so someone texted me and then that cut off my video. So this is going to be part two of what I was trying to say when I was down by the hives. Um, I'm also uh, an essential oil user and so I make all of my essential oils. And so this one this one is um, a spearmint essential oil that I'm making don't pay attention to the bottle I'm just using this bottle it's not uh, Wesson canola oil in here I actually use coconut oil for my essential oils or grapeseed oil this one is actually coconut oil and I ran off so I'm gonna have to go top it off but what I do is I put my spearmint and I grow my own spearmint and my own peppermint and so anybody who's ever grown mint knows that it grows profusely and you have to stay on top of it so this is the way that I stay on top of it I relocate it and I also use a lot of it in my foods and my drinks but what I did is I save old stockings that have runs in them and I take just the leg portion and I grind up my uh, peppermint spearmint whichever mints I'm using and I'll put them in the blender first and grind them up really really well to just break that uh, seal so that I can get the oils loosened up a lot of people will make them they'll just put the leaves in the oil and let it sit I prefer to do it this way that is full of nothing but spearmint leaves all the way down as you can see um, oh, I'm making a mess and I leave that out uh, at least 24 hours sometimes it's longer just because I don't think about it and it's not going to go bad or anything and then I tie that stocking around there just in case um, I mess up and uh, drop that down in there so me and my bees will have plenty of essential oils for whatever <laughs> and like I said that one there is coconut oil as the base with spearmint leaves and it's been sitting outside for about 24 hours now here comes that pesky lawnmower again. Hold on, I have one more thing to show you. So this area is our burn area. And if you can see that big giant box in the trash can, look where that came from. I don't know why, and it's very, very big, you see down in there, why Starks keep sending me emails about sales because they know that I can't resist a good sale. And y'all, I have peppermint, spearmint on my hands and my dog start following me. She loves mints. But anyway, and it smelled really good. So I guess she must have smelled it because she was on the other side of the yard when I start walking this way. So yes, y'all, I did it. I said I wasn't going to buy any more trees or plants this summer because I have way too many. And now that I've started beekeeping, I really need to cut back because I'm going to be spread a little bit too thin to do everything that needs to be done and like I said before I want to keep this a hobby and I don't want it to feel like a job because everybody knows we have those jobs that we hate and I want to always love what I'm doing so I want to keep it fun but I don't want to be overwhelmed but anyway back to the trees this one is I believe my pear tree yep that is, oh no it's not it is my Sun Glow Nectarine from Starks. I think that was $18. They all were $18, I believe. This big fat baby right here is my Black Tartarian Sweet Cherry. That's that. Again, that's got a really nice, big, fat, healthy, healthy um, start. And over here, this one is showing off a little bit. It has already broken dormancy. And it is my Moon Glow Pear. It's the dwarf variety. And so those are my new purchases from Starks and my last purchases, at least for this year. <laughs> because what I've been doing is I've been propagating plants from plants that I already have. And I'm going to show you one. Um, I bought a non fruiting orange quench I think that's how you say it tree from Lowe's this year 
very beautiful tree, very expensive tree. Um, but anyway, I purchased one with the hopes of propagating uh, more from it. And so what I did is about a month ago, I cut some of the limbs off of it and stuck them in here. And look, I have babies. Quite a few of them have started to grow. So next year, guys, I will have beautiful, beautiful orange quinces in my yard. And when I add that to the 40 plus chrysanthemums that I just planted, which are mostly oranges, uh, I know for a fact 20 of them are orange. Uh, then the 20 free ones that he gave me were multi colors, mostly orange. Uh, there were some reds, purples, and whites. It's going to be stunning here next year, and I can't hardly wait. And in the last video, I had asked if anyone wanted any of these birds of paradise. And of you who responded, I have sent those, and I do need to send you your tracking numbers because I was tired last night, so I didn't get a chance to send all of you your tracking numbers, but be assured they are on the way. Some I put extra just because I was trying to get rid of them. But thankfully today, I'm going to a beekeepers associating meeting and they are having a plant trade off. So the rest of these will be going with me to the meeting and I'll be sharing them with the other members and I will be bringing some other plant back home. And the best part about it is, it, is that it is free and it won't cost me anything. I'm not sure what I'll get, but um, they will be getting these birds of paradise because like I said before I really don't have any place to put them and so with that being said I'm going to end this video now and as always thank you guys for watching and please continue to follow me as I learn about these bees and they learn about me and hopefully we can coexist together actually they're very docile because I was just down there and I don't have on gloves I don't have on the hoodie any of that and I was literally within feet of them and they didn't bother me so I like that already oh on a final note I didn't know this until we got home last night my husband got so engrossed with the whole beekeeping thing yesterday when he was talking to another customer's wife um, if you saw in the video, it was myself and two other men. One was the beekeeper and one was another man coming to purchase bees. Uh, so my husband and the man's wife stayed back a little bit. But my husband has now ordered his uh, beekeeping gear. He has decided he is going to take the plunge because he said it looks like fun. So I have recruited one person to beekeeping. And so that is a good thing. We'll have another beekeeper and we'll have another hive here shortly. Um, we are looking at the uh, honey extractor and I'll do another video on that much later in the year or maybe next year. I'm not sure about how much honey I will have before this season is over because I really don't even know about how long the season will be. I know they make honey all year. And there's that lawnmower again, so I'm gonna walk over this way. But I also know that you're not supposed to pull it uh, after a certain time, and I'll, I'll learn more of that as I go along. But um, we are looking at the honey extractor that does, I think, nine frames. Uh, really, really, it's a hu humongous, humongous thing. Um, Man, I don't know where that um comes from because I'm not an ummer, but I think it's because I'm trying to think of things to tell you guys off the top of my head because I don't want to forget but anyway if you didn't know and you're looking for a honey extractor not all honey extractors are created equal some do shallow frames some do medium frames some do deep frames you might find one that does all three and that's the most expensive and that is exactly what we're looking at because I don't want to be hindered by the type of frame that I use for my bees so Lawn more is coming again, y'all, and I think that's time for me to go. So with that being said, I want to close here. And again, thank you all for watching my videos. Have a great day.